Well, good afternoon. Um, I'm going to make another uh, interesting recording um, this afternoon. Somebody asked about uh, kind of going through some of all the my synths and um, describing them a little bit, and as well as maybe accentuating one for the day. Um, and I'm so I think I'm going to do that today, and uh, I'm going to just go through my keyboards and uh, kind of switch cameras here and there. Uh, I might not be able to get everything, but I'll get it close. And then um, what I'm going to do is then I'm going to feature the, the the prologue here, the Korg prologue. It's a 16-voice analog synthesizer. And it's got two channels, 16-voice, um, but it also has... Um, or two oscillators for your per voice. And it also has a digital, uh, interesting multi-engine kind of a, of a digital um, voice as well that can be programmed. I haven't done that much with it, but man, when I sit down and start playing with kind of the knobs <coughs> and what I know from an electrical engineering standpoint and uh, with frequency and time domain stuff, it's um, fascinating to play with all the oscillators and modulators and and just uh, just just make up something. So I'm gonna try to do that today and see where that goes. But to start with, um, and hopefully this won't have to be re-edited or something, and I'll just go play that afterwards, and everything will work out. Even though I'm doing real experimental stuff today, but up here, um, this keyboard is the Roland Jupiter X, and it's the latest version of the Jupiter series, as you guys may know of that series if you're followers of synths and Jupiter X encapsulates um, gosh it's called it's called the Zencore engine which runs both all the flagship Roland stuff is run by Zencore now or a lot of it at least and um, <coughs> Zencore is like a it's a modeling engine and it's got a lot of power to it a lot of flexibility and so um, this is uh, really features the Jupiter, Juno, some of the old synths as well. And it actually models them so that all the switches on top change based on the model of the synthesizer that you want to emulate in this box. So sometimes these uh, simulators might only have one voice per per. Um, per in a unique, uh, or one, one oscillator per unique voice, uh, or they might have two, or s sometimes they might even have more. Anyway, um, then there's different um, settings for oscillators and uh, all sorts of stuff. The arpeggiation may be different, and, and you know all the other controls might be there too. Anyway, uh, it's so complicated that it would probably take me six months to just sit and learn it, so I just kind of uh, kind of play around and see where it, what, what comes up. Um, and now this Phantom 7, which is the, the original Phantom, well, there was an old Phantom series, but this was like the flagship product that came out, I think, in the 2020 or 19, something around there. Um, um, but it's a beautifully designed, sitting also on the same architecture as Encore, but the, but, the, but the layout is gorgeous. And the panel, um, the big screen here versus a very little screen on the Jupiter X here, as you could see. That's the only screen that's shown. So everything else is encoded in dumpster diving. <laughs> as, um, dump, I'm sorry, dumpster, menu diving. <laughs> but it's kind of the same thing. Because <laughs> sometimes you go through so many different um, paths in a very tiny display like this. It's kind of cool. But uh, the utility of it is kind of questionable. I do love the sounds of this instrument, though, and it's got a lot of flexibility to, to play standalone. I just don't do that since I've got so many synths. I actually want the variety of the different oscillator types. Anyway, the Roland Phantom 7, that means the 7 mm -hmm. keyboard. There's an 8 that's a full, like this one. The Korg, this one right here, is my main um, keyboard, as you probably see a lot of times. And it's weighted, and it's a beautiful, beautiful action. The Korg Kronos came out, boy, in 2010, 2008, so way back then. And it trumped the entire market. And uh, it took Roland a long time to catch up. Um, in fact, this, this one is still an amazing, amazing instrument. The biggest challenge is, is that it's a very, very complicated modeling engine. There's, I think there's eight or nine models in there. And holy mackerel, does it have power. Uh, capability, the ability to vary anything you want, but it takes a lot of uh, 
Yeah, I mean, you're almost like learning a whole new universe every time you move to different boxes, every different uh, keyboards. But the Phantom Seven is a is a really is a sixteen um, oscillator kind of a thing. Another, it's a it's a digital, so it's a digital um, sampler and and synth, and so you can have up to sixteen layers, if you will, in one um, sound. But you can also do so many variations. It's got a drum machine in here. It's got, I, again, I don't use it as a standalone workstation because I've got drum machines in the TR-8S up here. And also there's drums in the um, digital audio workstation. Uh, I've got Ableton 11 right now. So anyway, so this is Roland Phantom 7. Beautiful sounding piano, um, as I might show you. Um, Actually, I might move this around a little bit. I won't be able to do everything, but here's their piano. So that's the piano, and then I think you guys have heard this before if you've listened to my music. So that's a, that's a setting that I've made where the cello is uh, playing down here from the C to the bottom full keyboard here. And then up here was a violin, very, very, very lovely violin. with, And you can really make it sing with, the, there's actually a, I won't, can't show you here, but there's like a toggle like this one over here. If you see, it's like something similar to that right here. And so I can make the violin kind of cry. I mean, so I can make it expressive, or I can even change the pitch. And then this cello would be the second voice. Um, anyway, there's a flute and clarinet, same kind of a thing. You can kind of break up. This has all the different wind instruments and the brass. There's beautiful brass here, too. Um, in fact, I'll go back to this one right here. Well, let's see, right there. Brass and strings. Oh, right here. Okay, anyway, <laughs> so I'm starting to make a bunch of these little combination things. So, for example, this one, if I press it into zone view, I have actually, I've programmed right now seven different kinds of sounds. So I could be playing up here bass, but then I can change those. So here it starts with the brass, which is what I played first. Now I'm going to change to the mood strings. So you can really play something really expressive with just pressing one or two notes. I can also tone down the upper manual. Now then I go into what's called an inner up lead. <laughs> this is really kind of cranky. So 
it's kind of... Okay, so that's, um, I mean, they, you know, and you can kind of hear, it's a very soft and um, even the even the, the really raspy thing is kind of, it's not as uh, coarse as some of the old analog, but it's pretty good, pretty good simulation. Um, anyway, and then so over here is, I can't really play at the same time, but that is the prologue, the 16, like I said. This is the Kronos. This is the flagship product that Corgus put out for, gosh, 13 years now, 14, and uh, people are hoping that they're going to supplant it with something that's better than what's come out so far, the Nautilus, and uh, there's a couple of them. Um, but I'm, I'm holding out for the new Korg when it does come out. And then this is the, the latest TR-8S model drum machine from Roland. So these three are Roland. And then if you look uh, over here, right there, these two boxes are, are those two boxes right there are actually the, they basically are the uh, input, all the audio input that actually converts it into digital that then goes to my computer, <laughs> which is actually down there. But the I've got the screens on both sides. And so the beauty of that is, is that it converges all the microphones and everything and then allows me to manage them from the digital audio workstation uh, from Ableton. So that gives me a lot of power what I would not have if I was just working on those boxes alone, even though they're far better um, than some of the other stuff that's out there, but they're complicated when you have two boxes working tandem and all that. So the beauty is, is that they have an online software driver, Roland does, that really helps you to manage that. And then, then the, uh, the uh, Ableton Live software is just fabulous too so we use that and then I use OBS um, to actually capture these uh, videos and then upload them to YouTube uh, premium so that's kind of the process I've got a Roland driver for those uh, sound captures right there studio captures I think that's what they're called and then they go into the uh, Ableton digital audio workstation and then out to OBS and OBS then converts it to a stream that well, to, to, to uh, you know a certain format that then YouTube uh, up at the cloud can interpret and then I upload it. It takes a while to upload because it's actually scanning for content and copyright stuff and everything. So it's a very complex algorithm we're using now before they send something up and approve it. So that's that. Um, that's and then um, over here that that square rectangular thing there is from Ableton as well. It's called the Push 2, and what it will be doing is sooner or later is I'll be using it for doing loops because uh, a lot of the EDM and Transwave stuff, you start a loop, you actually make a pattern, and then you repeat that pattern, and then you add another pattern on top of that and another pattern. And the beauty is, is that it's very forgiving. You can erase patterns and do them over, and... Ultimately, you can build a pretty complicated song just by yourself 
once you understand orchestration of that stuff. So it's very powerful, and that uh, I'm looking forward to, <laughs> to getting into it because I, I would just love to do more of the trance wave and like ambient music, which is a lot of um, a lot of repetition, but. I want to be able to make it less repetitious. I'd like to be able to be more creative in the creation. Instantaneous creation is what I call my stuff. I love being just doing improv where I don't know where I go. I don't know where I'm coming from. In many cases, I'm just in the flow. The only thing I have to figure out is what key do I play, and it usually just starts and I just go. I decide to uh, pick a certain set of sounds if I decide to get a little bit creative, I try to make up another preset or something like that so I maintain some freshness, at least on the Phantom. The Korg is so complicated that I think i investing in the complexity of that workstation, that, that software um, would be an exercise in futility because I think within the next two years, like I said, they're going to come out with a new flagship product and it'll be much more intuitive and much less effort to learn. <laughs> and I'm always about that. After <laughs> doing 40 years of learning tech, I'm tired of that. So I'm delighted that as the stuff I show you today, all this stuff, I mean, I had put up some of it and gotten it up, but it wasn't, I had bought a lot of the equipment, kind of piecemeal, but when when Don DeVore came and, um, came and lived with me here and has been living with me since uh, back in March, I believe, I think it's March, April, um, but it's given him an opportunity to finish up his work in the long way, which is a beautiful album if you have not heard it. Don Devor, double N D O N N, Devor D E V O R E, and his album is called The Long Way. And you can also search for The Long Way, a future musical, futuristic musical video. Um, so anyway, he's done some really creative work, but in addition, he is. Not only the, <laughs> the best musician you've never heard of, some of you, because, I mean, he played in a lot of different venues, but I'm just saying a lot, a lot of people have not, in, in other circles, but he's played um, My Little Pony. He was a brony, <laughs> and I loved uh, what he did on that. He created a lot of songs and a big fan base, <clears throat> and he seemed to do that several times. He's also been a, a studio owner of the biggest studio, and... Uh, in, San, in, in, in Seattle, um, Ironwood, back in the day, 2001. Unfortunately, 9-11 hit. But um, he's been very, very helpful in getting this whole thing set up. So it becomes less and less of a chore for me to play. And so therefore, I can spend all my time playing and talking to you guys and having fun and uh, effortlessly creating stuff. So anyway, uh, these are the Yamaha's. I think you're familiar with those speakers. If you if you aren't, you're probably not interested in the specs. And if you are interested, you know what they are. <laughs> so um, let's see. That's really it. I mean, the other two, I'll switch over here real quick. The other two keyboards here, if I go to Cam 1, are these two. And this is the grandmother. And the grandmother is a... Uh, <sighs> Yeah, the grandmother. Uh, it, well, it's from Moog, but it's two voice, uh, but one one note at a time. The matriarch is the one below it, and that's the one I play a lot when I want to analog. I, but both these analog synths are really interesting, but they're just very different. This one is pure analog. This one has a few digital components in it, but this one, for example, does have four note polyphony, but you can also gang them together into one note and have four oscillators, which makes the sound very, very, very um, rich. And that's why I like to use that keyboard. I'm staring into the screen, sorry, because I can't look and talk to you with the mic very easily uh, and be comfortable. <laughs> so sorry to, uh, to cheer, <laughs> look in the back of my head. Um, but anyway, the Matriarch is a very unique instrument. It's obvious it's got very much support for modularity as well. So does the grandmother. So um, Moog, God rest their souls. I, I love their uh, store back east and I'm disappointed a little bit in the progress supposedly of society that continues to aggregate people together 
and make it simpler and cheaper and faster, but is it better? Um, and that's, I guess, needs to be determined, but um, it's disappointing that we lost some real heroes that uh, made the synthesizer world the quality level it was. So thank you um, to the Moogs and to everyone who's been involved in that product set. And I wish the ones that new owners well. I hope uh, that they can maintain the same level of quality or more. All right. Um, let's see. I'm going to, so now, <laughs> sorry, I keep hitting myself. Now I'm going to switch over and, well, I know the keyboards, are, I'm going to play that and only that. Um, I might add some other things. Well, you'll notice if I change, but I'm going to try to focus on the, uh, the uh, Korg Prologue this afternoon and uh, we'll see where it goes. All right, I'm going to, I think, turn the mic off. See you next time.
guys well i hope that was um a little informative to maybe at least one of the folks that was interested in what the layout of my system was um, i also have a few other things like a studio um, a, stu a studio logic pedal board band here that i don't use as much as i thought i would because i'm an organist but i usually use the 32 pedal you know big ago console so i don't really use it much I would like to get into some Bach music and pull out all my Bach, <laughs> like uh, all the big preludes and fugues and pasacallas and oh, all the different songs I used to play back in the day. Um, but it's not easy playing without a, 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 a full pedal board. Um, and so I was kind of deliberating when I got this whether I wanted like one of those virtual pipe organs that are really beautiful, or did I want something with more variety? And so 
I decided to do something with more variety, but maybe someday if I'm <laughs> if this takes off or whatever, I might get a uh, an, uh, an accompanying pipe organ, a virtual pipe organ. Um, so it's got the full 32 keyboard, AGO key, um, pedal board, because that makes it really fun to play some of the most complicated stuff of Bach, which is more some of my favorite, Passacaglia and Fugue and C minor and the Prelude and Fugue and E minor wedge, um, the, to the Prelude and Fugue and D major, the major one is beautiful. Well, it's just... And then there's the, uh, I'm, I'm going, I'm just talking a little bit here, but this is kind of like uh, some stuff I used to play. This is Passacaglia and Fugue. It's a Passacaglia where this pattern is repeated 21 times in the song. in and makes it more complicated anyway it adds and adds and adds and Bach is one of these uh, composers that builds it up to such a crescendo that uh, it just takes you in, in, in by storm as you start listening to the different variations especially if you have a, a, an organist that's romantic in terms of his expression of, uh, of the artwork there's a lot of broke players that are very uh, precise and I'm more of a, uh, I don't know, emotional, romantic player. Uh, so anyway, um, I think that's about it. I am probably done for the night. Well, I might actually come back and make a Christmas thing, or I might decide to sample another instrument for you guys, and maybe I might do the Moog next time. But i got to move my microphones around. That's going to be... Well, I might be able to move my mug around instead. <laughs> we'll see what happens. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a great night if I don't talk to you before tomorrow. I'm going to probably try to start doing um, uh, like a month more. I mean, morning. Every morning I'll probably do a video and, um, you know, more of a musical thing. And then maybe in the afternoon I might do something. And then I'm thinking um, of doing streaming maybe twice a week, um, getting a regular schedule up there, maybe two hours on a Thursday night. I don't know what, what people might be recommend would be the best streaming night if somebody wants to go on live. If anybody has any ideas, I'd be all ears in terms of if you decide you'd like to um, have that kind of thing. I mean, I, I know I don't have that many followers right now, so um, it's uh, you know probably not a big deal, but um, I'd love to match up people's um, availability and stuff because it'd be kind of fun to play live. <laughs> I don't know why it seems just fun, more kind of like gutsy. <laughs> okay, all right, guys. Um, love you. Have a great evening and four days before Christmas and then and, and about, let's see, seven hours and 14 minutes. We are at the winter solstice, amazingly enough. Seven hours and 14 minutes. So happy solstice day and also four days before Christmas. And then we got New Year's coming up and golly 11 days of 12 days and that's going to be fun and all of a sudden the sun's going to start coming back and uh, springtime's going to hit the north northern hemisphere and uh, that'll be welcome news for some of the folks that are getting real cold weather right now i know in denmark and other places so uh, i think they are i think you guys are <laughs> all right take care guys god bless and uh, as always thanks so much for visiting my channel and uh, thanks some of you who've been with me a long time and maybe my friends who uh, felt like I abandoned them sometimes. And I apologize if I've made you feel that way. I get so busy and so excited about so many things that it's hard uh, to keep me going in one single direction. <laughs> and I sometimes feel that that's okay because that's what God wants me to do is just be whatever I need to be in the moment. Um, and that changes from moment to moment. So... I'm trying to play without very few rules, but I will try to abide and be respectful to people and their beliefs as well. So, all right, guys, take care. God bless. Have a wonderful evening in this amazing playground. Bye-bye.